Welcome back to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. My name is Derek Brown, and on today's video, we are going to discuss 10 players that I wrote up in the week one primer on fantasypros.com that are going to, shall we say, outplay their current ranking in ECR on Fantasy Pros. All of these picks made in this video are based on all of the research that I did this week and will be doing every single week in the NFL season for the primer. I'm covering every game, getting deep into the weeds to give you the edge you need to win all your fantasy matchups. Every week in the primer, I'm going to run through who you should start, who you should sit, who you should flex, and maybe who you should fade in all hopes of you're going to win all of your matchups. I want you to make the best informed decisions that you can with your lineups every single week, so please head to fantasypros.com and read the primer right now. All right, first player up on the list here, and actually I'm gonna give you a two pack, a twofer with this. Two guys in the same backfield. Let's talk about Javante Williams and Jaleel McLaughlin. This week, I think they're gonna come screaming out the gate. You're looking at the matchup and the Seattle Seahawks were one of the worst run defenses in the NFL last year. They give the second most rushing yards per game and the third highest explosive run rate. Now we're talking about both of these backs, Play different roles in the backfield. Javante taking most of the early down stuff. Jaleel going to mix in on passing downs. And even the passing down matchup is fantastic for Jaleel McLaughlin. Seattle also, last year, gave the 10th highest yards per reception to running backs and the 9th most receiving yards to backs. So what are we talking about? We've seen in a Sean Payton offense two backs smashing in the same year. I'm telling you it can happen in the same game. Look at both of these guys to severely massively outplay their rankings on fantasy pros right now all right next player up i gotta discuss here aaron jones and his ranking on fantasy pros is not blasphemous he's the rb20 but i'm telling you this week he could flirt with rb1 numbers for a player that what are we talking about when he was healthy last year he showed the same ability the same juice we've always loved that of aaron jones weeks 15 through 20 last year averaging almost 22 touches per game 120 total yards per game and so we think in week one, Aaron Jones is healthy. And now he gets to face one of the worst run defenses in the NFL last year that did pretty much nothing. And I know you're saying, okay, well, they got Brian Burns. Brian Burns is not known for his run defense. They did pretty much nothing to upgrade this run defense last year for a Giants run defense that allowed the second highest explosive run rate last year and the fourth most rushing yards per game. Don't be surprised if Aaron Jones walks out of week one with RB1 numbers and you are licking your chops that you started him. All right, moving over to wide receivers. Next player we got to mention here is Christian Kirk. Now, currently on Fantasy Pros, he's the wide receiver 33. I'm telling you, I think he could be a strong wide receiver two in week one. And this all comes down to the matchup. And yes, Christian Kirk practicing in full. We think he's healthy. I know the calf injury was a little bit of concern walking into week one, but that's in the rear view now, baby. We're going to talk about the matchup, and the matchup is fantastic for Christian Kirk. One, high total game. We think this game is going to explode, so who is going to pop off in this game? I'm telling you Christian Kirk is going to have a monster game. We're looking at a Miami pass defense that last year allowed the seventh most receptions and the seventh highest PPR points per target two opposing slot wide receivers. Okay, that's not good in any way you slice it. Now you look at their slot corner, who same player from last year, allowed an 84% catch rate and a 132 pass rating in coverage. This all leads to Christian Kirk. Right now is being ranked as the wide receiver 33 on fantasypros.com. He can produce wide receiver two high end wide receiver two numbers in week one. Get him into your lineups. Okay, the next wide receiver we have to mention here, and I'm, I've already been forecasting a huge second-year breakout for this player. So, let's get him in the lineups in Week 1, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. Tyler Lockett is already banged up walking into Week 1. When were, you're possibly watching this, maybe he's ruled out. We don't know. I don't care if Tyler Lockett plays or he doesn't play. But, just mentioning him, because if he is out, we're talking about the Seattle passing attack is even more condensed than what it probably already is right now if Lockett plays. But Jackson Smith and Jigbo, we go back to the matchup. And Denver last year had the 11th highest single high usage in the NFL, almost 56% of their defensive snaps. Why does this matter? When we saw Jackson Smith and Jigba aligned outside and not used as a screen merchant in the Seattle passing attack, he was awesome. 
28% target per route run rate, almost 2.0 yards per route run. This all leads us back to, we believe in the talent. I'm telling you to believe in the matchup for Jackson Smith and Jigba, and you should believe you should get him into your lineups this week. All right, before we break into the top five of this list for week one, again, if you, if you were in draft season, and you drafted a ton of teams, and you're now juggling multiple fantasy teams and multiple leagues, and you're feeling just a tad bit overwhelmed. I'm telling you that it doesn't have to be that way. You could simplify things today with the help of Fantasy Pros, with the use of our multi-league assistant. You could see the latest news, notes, rankings for every player across all of your teams, all of them, all in one spot to make your path to victory clear and easy and that's what we all want so dive in and let us help you dominate all of your leagues right now with the multi-league assistant at fantasypros.com slash my playbook or on the fantasy football my playbook app download it today all right breaking into the top five of this list of players that look if you're reading the primer you got to get into lineups or at least consider them because the upside is immense next player i got to talk about here is rico dowdle and I know you're saying, oh, well, Zeke Elliott's there, and now Dalvin Cook is in town, and I don't know what to do with Rico Dowdle. I'm telling you, he could be an amazing flex play this week for you. He's the RB39 on FantasyPros.com. He can massively outproduce that. If I were to tell you we walk out of week one, and Rico Dowdle leads the way, and he gets 15 touches in this backfield, and he scores once, would you be that surprised, considering the AARP running backs that he is flanked by right now? Well, you really shouldn't. Because last year, amongst 53 qualifying backs, Rico Dowdle showed in the small sample that he got. Talent, baby. 16th in yards of the contact per attempt. And yes, the Browns are not an easy defense. They're not a cakewalk. But a lot of that strength comes via the passing game. If you look at what they did as a run defense last year, they can be had. This run defense for Cleveland allowed the highest explosive run rate, the highest missed tackles allowed per attempt, and the second highest yards of the contact per attempt. So... Even if Rico Dowdle doesn't get 20 touches in this game, if he gets 15, maybe rattles us 60, 70 yards, and he gets into the end zone, you're going to be happy that you started him in week one. Okay, next player we have to mention here, and going back to the wide receivers, I'm going to tell you a player that's going to, pardon the dad pun, pop off in week one. That is Pop Douglas. Come on down, baby. And what we saw him as a starter in this New England offense, and I know you're saying to yourself, it's gross, I don't want any part of this offense. Pop showed that he could play last year. He's a talented wide receiver. And so we're ranking him right now on fantasypros.com as the wide receiver 61. I won't be shocked if he's a strong wide receiver three this week. And this comes down to not only did he show that he could command targets, because when he was a starter in the offense, almost a 21% target share, led the team with almost a 25% first read share. But the matchup is also awesome here. You have a Cincinnati Bengals secondary that last year allowed the third most receiving touchdowns to opposing slot wide receivers and the fifth highest PPR points per target. So, while it might seem gross on the surface, I'm telling you, look, I'm diving deep into the weeds on the primer every single week to give you this type of edge to tell you, like a player, Demario Douglas needs to be in consideration and he can produce massively for your teams in week one. All right, going from one ambiguous passing game to another, another one that people don't really know what to do with and don't know if they should be investing in it. I'm going to tell you that Josh Palmer is going to outplay his ranking in week one. Currently the wide receiver 47 on fantasypros.com. And this comes down to the matchup is amazing and he is the wide receiver one for the Los Angeles Chargers this year. You look at what this secondary did after Antonio Pierce became the Raiders head coach last year. Single high usage. That coverage shall be used on almost 56% of their snaps. Why does this matter? Because Josh Palmer lit it on fire when he faced it last year. Had a 21% target per route run rate, 2.22 yards per route run. These are both glittering metrics on a per route basis for Josh Palmer. If he's the wide receiver one, which I'm projecting for the Chargers this week, I know that the passing volume, we all have concerns. But Justin Herbert can be efficient and Joshua Palmer is the one that's probably going to get the downfield looks. So even if he gets five or six targets, if he takes one of them for 40 or 50 yards and scores, he's going to pay off this week in fantasy. Okay, 
We've talked about running backs. We've talked about wide receivers. Let's get over to the quarterback and tight end position to conclude these 10 players that I think are going to smash in week one based off of all my analysis in the primer. And the next guy we have to mention, we got to talk about is Geno Smith. Chef Geno is the only cook in the kitchen for quarterbacks. We got to talk about this week because I think he's going to crush. QB19 on fantasypros.com right now. And I think he could be, or at least close to, or flirt with QB1 numbers. And this is not only the matchup, but Chef Gino's talent. What did we see for him last year? In a clean pocket, which he didn't get much of those last year because he faced the seventh highest pressure rate. In a clean pocket, Gino was still awesome last year. He was eighth in yards per attempt and at the fifth highest passing grade from clean pockets and you're saying how many of those does he get versus denver hopefully a lot versus a defense that had the fourth lowest pressure rate in the nfl last season so geno smith awesome in clean pockets going to get him in denver and now outside of patrick sertan who i know just got the bag outside of him in the secondary who are you scared of for a pass defense that really didn't get any kind of overhaul during throughout the offseason, maybe losing Justin Simmons doesn't help them either. But this secondary last year gave it the seventh highest yards per attempt and the fifth most passing touchdowns to opposing quarterbacks. This all leads us back to, if I believe in Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to pop off in week one, I believe in his quarterback as well. Geno Smith is going to cook in week one, especially in super flex formats. And you're like, Oh, which QB2 do I play? Is it Will Levis? Is it Geno Smith this week? Or is it somebody else going down the barrel? It is Geno Smith. Get him into your lineups right now. Okay, final player we got to mention here. And look, I'm going down the well here because if you got Kyle Pitts or you got another tight end that you're kind of worried about, maybe it's Cole Komet. Maybe it's Dalton Schultz. Maybe it's somebody on that tight end one fringe and you don't know whether to start them or what to do with them. Or maybe it's Pat Fryer, maybe. I'm going to tell you to pick up and start this week, Janu Smith. Currently the tight end 23 on fantasypros.com. And why am I so high on Janu? Because look, we know the talent and the ability, the athletic ability has been there. It's always been there for Janu Smith. For a player amongst 43 qualifying tight ends last season, was 11th in yards per route run, 5th in missed tackles, 4th per reception. So we know that raw talent is there. <laughs> now you put him with one of the sharpest, if not maybe the sharpest, play caller and yes i'm looking at you mike mcdaniel and kyle shanahan but look former san francisco coordinator might uh, look the pupil could have become the teacher now and what are we talking about with mike mcdaniel's offense with john U. smith yak opportunities get the ball in his hands and let him produce and that can happen in week one the miami dolphins were not good at defending tight ends last year allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game to the position and the highest yards per reception to the position so even if it's not a ton of target volume, if he's the wide receiver three, basically in this offense in a high total game in week one, what are we talking about? He needs to score probably to get into the top 12 tight ends, right? Okay. That could probably happen in week one. You have a consolidated passing attack. They're not running in at the goal line. I'm telling you, John o. Smith can catch a touchdown and you need to consider him for your lineups. All right, everyone. Those are the top 10 players you need to be getting or considering for your fantasy lineups that are going to outproduce their rankings on fantasypros.com. Again, not only do you need to sit here and consider these 10 players, but use the multi-league assistant. It doesn't have to be hard, people. Yes, we all got a lot of leagues, but at Fantasy Pros, we can help you manage them easily. Enjoy the primer and enjoy week one. Football is back, baby!